NASCAR has already gone decently far into many of their series' schedules for 2022, as the top three national series have all been pretty early, yet sort of not too early, on providing different forms of chaos and parity. Some of the smaller series, like ARCA and Wheel and Modified, are about to get as active as anything with the prime time of spring season and the entirety of summer arriving soon. However, there's still one series that still hasn't gotten underway yet, and it's about to do so very, very soon. It's about to become Canada's time to show off some good old stock car racing, and that, my good friends, is the NASCAR Pinty Series. And no, I'm not forgetting about Wheel and Euro nor Mexico for you international fans. So anyway, today is the day where we'll take a good look at what the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series season could look like, including informative previews of the driver roster and race schedule, along with some random predictions from myself. Because, to be honest, why the hell not? But first, a quick message from me before we get into this preview. Well, damn. That video really blew up. Damn. I suppose the algorithm finally noticed me. <laughs> I got a lot of positive comments, I got a lot of constructive criticism, I even got some absolute troll memes of comments. If that's a way to put it. I got them all. In all seriousness though, it's awesome to see how much the channel has done in recent weeks, especially that one video in particular. It seems as though it has seriously helped uh, spread the awareness of the uh, NASCAR Pinties series, which from the beginning, that was my main goal. So, for all of that, thank you for coming out here, taking a look at what I've put out, and adding on some incredible support. Which I was mostly not expecting to get at all. With the new Pinty series season coming up, I'm hoping to take things to the next level, and be an important figure in advancing the Canadian side of more sports for both the Canadian history and just in general, me being a fan from Canada, of NASCAR. I mean, I do other content as well, so I guess I must have different areas, have some parody, you know. To not miss out on anything else down the line, I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so you remain caught up, give each video a like, and perhaps leave a nice comment or even some constructive criticism or some feedback. Like, I read all the comments, I try to interact with every one of you the best I can. Again, thank you very much for the support as of recently, and now, on to the video. With that first Pinty Series video absolutely blowing up as of recently, it only makes sense to back it up months later with a season preview video. To quickly look back at the previous season, man, it was a wild ride. It didn't take long for things to get strange, as Mother Nature let loose at sunset in what was supposed to be a double header in one day, a race during the day, and one at night. But it turned out to be two races during one single night. Right off the bat, the racing was action-packed as a multitude of young guns took charge for the most part. Youngster Peter Shepard III and three-time champion Andrew Ranger seemed en route to a late battle for the win, but a former Camping World Truck Series winner and replacement for an injured Donald Tiege, Raphael Lassard, found a late run, sealing the victory in race one, and then going on to dominate the second race for another victory. Rookie Trayton Lapsevich, yes, the brother of Caden, nearly did stealing of his own in the second race, but he fell just short. On the road courses, Alex Tagliani held on off a late restart at Trois-Rivières, and Kevin Lacroix dominated on the former airport runways at Circuit Icar. At Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, in a weekend doubleheader, it appeared to be the day for underdog Gary Clute on Saturday. But two-time champion LP Dumoulin stole the checkered flag as Clute faced unfortunate mechanical problems late in the race. On Sunday, Mark Antoine Cameron scored his first win since 2018, as his car found pace late in the race against a fast Alex Tagliani. Back on the ovals, at Flamborough in Hamilton, Ontario, Lapsovich looked good early on, but Andrew Ranger was able to dominate most of the race en route to getting himself back into points contention after a slew of inconsistent performances. Then came the biggest part of the schedule, a three-race competition for the championship at the historical Delaware Speedway, which came from Mother Nature ruining an originally scheduled double-header at Autodrome Chaudière earlier in the season. Race 1 was rookie versus veteran, as Lapsovich and two-time champion DJ Kennington fought for the win the entire time. 
with the ladder coming out on top with the cleanest final lap bump and run ever. Race 2 was literal mayhem as the green flag runs were absolutely inconsistent. Multiple wrecks shook up the field and the points, and Kennington scored back-to-back -back victories while tempers flared on the pit lane and even in the infield. Race 3, the championship finale, at least 3-4 to four drivers in contention for the title. Another wild race sees Lapsovich dominate and fall short again with a crash. Lacroix looks set for victory, but Andrew Ranger says, nope, mine. LP Dumoulin was crowned a champion for the third time in his career. An absolutely wild season, and a perfect rebound for what was only a sixth race schedule in 2020. Now, you know what happened in 2021, and it's time to advance upon that with a preview of 2022, starting off with the driver roster. Please note that some areas of the roster may look different by the season opener and during the season at any point. So, for anyone unconfirmed at this time, we'll just say what if for the time being. And down in the comments below, I'll probably put up some updates so that people can check every now and then if they are interested in doing so. But now, let's get into it. A big shout out to Cam K of the Stickers and Scuffs podcast for this list. Doing this preview would likely be way more difficult without this. To confirm, this list was released on May 5th, so there may have been multiple updates since then. Let's take a look. Right off the bat, we get to arguably the best team in the series, and that's 22 Racing with their multiple Chevrolets. Back in the number 18 car is Alex Tagliani, an extremely experienced driver in all forms of motorsports, including NASCAR, Champ Car, IndyCar, and sports cars. Tagliani has had quite the conflicting career in the Pinty series, whether it's multiple wins and falling just short in one season, or being the most inconsistent driver ever and finishing in an unexpected points position in another. He looked to be the ultimate contender for the title last year, but Delaware seemed to be like black ice to his car, as he didn't score a single finish above at least 14th. This year, he'll look to find redemption for the late season cliff drop. In the number 20 car is a driver that personally excites me the most, and that's 17-year-old phenom Trayton Lapsevich at 22 Racing. The younger brother of former champion Caden Lapsevich, Trayton made his series debut in 2020, making two starts in the number 18 car and scoring top fives both times. In 2021, he jumped to full time, swapping to the number 20 car and putting on a clinic, with the exception of not scoring a win, scoring five top fives, seven top tens, four poles, 309 laps led, and an average finish at 8.9, and a 5th place points finish. The one big issue with Trayton is inconsistency, and maybe a tiny bit of discipline. But to be fair, for a 17 year old in a car like his, it's a little bit expected. Another year of experience should build his potential and discipline up even more, and honestly, I think he could score multiple wins and even go for the title with his type of racecraft. It should be fun watching him. Funny enough, a team with the name Bush exists here. And no, it's not related to Kyle nor Kurt Busch. Driving for a family-owned team, Chantel Kalika from Saskatchewan ran 10 races in the series between 2019 and 2021, with an overall average finish of 14.9. Being from Saskatchewan, she raced at both Edmonton and Sutherland Automotive in Saskatoon. Dave Jacombs Racing is a team that many series enthusiasts will recognize from the get-go. They were the team that helped veteran Andrew Ranger score two championships in the first three seasons when the series had a partnership with NASCAR, and they've also fielded other well-known drivers, such as Alex LeBay, Jacques Villeneuve, and Jeffrey Earnhardt. For 2022, they will have rookie J.P. Bergeron in the number one car. In his early 20s, and a son of former hockey player and current Pinty Series team owner Marc-Andre Bergeron, Gene Phillip began his career in racing in 2016 by racing in a series called Cup Lights at Circuit iCar. After winning a championship, he moved over to the American Canadian Tour Late Model Series, scoring a 6th place points finish and Rookie of the Year honors. He continued to run late models for a couple of years, and by 2021, he was running late models at New Smyrna Speedway in Florida, and he drove for David Gilliland Racing in ARCA, scoring a best finish of 5th, twice. He'll be running a full-time schedule in the Pinty Series this year, and with how much potential he seems to have, he could compete for a championship almost immediately. Alex Gannett from Terrebonne, Quebec, has actually had a decent Pinty Series career, although very distant when it comes to his seasons. Ran full-time in 2013, finishing 10th in the standings with two top fives and five top tens, then scored four top tens and four starts in 2014, returned to the series in 2019 with two top tens and three starts, 
and ran a full season in 2021, scoring two top fives and seven top tens for a seventh place points finish with Rickware Racing. With experience in the Xfinity and Truck Series, ARCA, and late models, Gannett should be an underdog to watch out for wherever he races, which says all road courses and potentially the ovals. Like some other drivers that will eventually pop up on the list, Dave Bailey is a local driver to Oshwicken Speedway, driving in dirt street stocks and sprint cars. He sounds successful over there, so watch out for him when the dirt race arrives. DJ Kennington returns in the good old number 17 car for his own team, a two-time series champion and a veteran that has ran since the early cast car days. In 176 Pinty Series starts, he's got 23 wins, 104 top fives, 150 top tens, 15 poles, and 3,499 laps led. Kennington has dropped a bit in recent years based on wins, albeit the Delaware performance last year. With more young guns coming in, and the field becoming more and more stacked each year, Kennington has to put in a little bit more fight now while nearing his 50s. He will most certainly fight for the title this year. Returning in the number 47 car, also for his own team, as defending series champion is LP Dumoulin, another series veteran with a somewhat similar journey to Kennington. A three-time series champion, Dumoulin's stats consist of 126 starts, 11 wins, 62 top fives, 93 top tens, 5 poles, and an average finish of 7.7. .7. Dumoulin isn't as much of a winner as some of the other veterans in the series, but his ability to clutch at the right times is what sets him apart from the rest. He should compete for the title once again. Joining Dumoulin's team on the road courses is LP Montour, a driver from Boisbriand, Quebec, who made a series debut last year at Trois-Rivières, finishing 8th for LP Dumoulin's team. Also from Blainville, Quebec, is Matthew Kingsbury in the number 12 car, who began his career with the American Canadian Late Model Tour in 2017, going full-time in 2019 with two top 10s and 9 starts. That same year, as well as in 2020, he ran part-time in the Pinty Series for Duro King Autosport, scoring a top 10 in all three starts in 2019, and a top 5 and top 10 in four of six 2020 races. Kingsbury is expected to run at least five races this year, which include three ovals and two row courses. With the number zero is Glenn Styers from Oshwicken, Ontario. A driver nearing his 60s that withdrew from what was supposed to be a start in 2018 at most sport, Styers has raced and contributed to Ontario racing for many years, and he's the man who gave birth to Oshwicken Speedway, a dirt oval track on a First Nation reserve between Brantford and Hamilton. We'll be getting to the track at a later point, so stay tuned. Styers is now an inductee of the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame, and with this track now back in operation after being closed during the beginnings of the pandemic, it seems only fitting that he races in the Pinty Series debut at the track. According to the list, he'll attempt a full season schedule. I have no idea how he'll do, but from what I've researched, he may be quite competitive wherever his pace shall run. Jamie Krishik. I'm hoping I'm saying that right, I'm definitely not. Ran a couple of races in the series between 2014 and 2019, scoring a total of one top five and three top tens altogether, along with some experience in the Arkham Menard Series West. From Montreal, Quebec, 49-year-old Yoklin Fecteau is a guy who is always looking to race on the road courses in the Pinty Series. He originally participated in the Canadian Touring Car Championship before swapping to part-time runs in Pinty's in 2014. He competed at three of four road courses in 2021, scoring a best finish of 13th at Trois-Rivières. It's expected that he runs at all the road courses this season. Kevin Lacroix returns for his 8th full-time season in the number 74 car, looking for his first series championship after years of failing every single time. His consistency fell off quite a lot in 2021, albeit a win at Circuit Icar. With 14 wins and 2 runner-up points finishes in 7 seasons, Lacroix will look to try again in a very stacked field. From Oakville, Ontario, firefighter, team owner, and veteran underdog Larry Jackson returns for another full-time campaign in the number 84 car with his own team. With the best points finish at 7th in 2020, and a recent points finish at 10th in 2021, Jackson looks to continue putting up decent results with his sponsor O'Neill Electric Supply. Joining Jackson is Matthew Scannell, who is expected to run at all the road courses. At 25 years old, Scannell has made 31 starts in 6 years of running in the series, scoring 7 top 10s, 17 laps led, and a best points finish of 11th, with top 10s in all 3 of his starts in 2021. Expect him to run up towards the front whenever the series gets on the road courses. The first of at least 3 teams to have a car with a mixture of drivers is Legendary Motor Car, where the Clute family, besides Gary, who we'll get into later, will run a couple of races. Peter is the father, and is also a show presenter with a show named after the team. 
With an incredible passion for cars alongside his two sons, Peter is expected to run on three road courses, including Most Sport, Chirano, and Trois Rivières. One of two sons that will join him, Ryan, will run the second Most Sport race. In the number 31 car running at Most Sport will be Daniel Boy for MBS Motorsports, a driver who ran two races in the series in 2013 with an average finish of 18.5. Based on what I could find, he appears to be a heavily invested midget car driver and he's also a full-time high-performance driving instructor. He will be joined by an experienced crew chief named Jay Fredericks, who has experience in the Pinty series as a car chief and the Trans Am TA2 series as a crew chief. Apparently, the car that will be used was purchased from Scott Steckley's 22 racing team, so this could be something to keep a good memory of. With only the track name and neither race number being specifically mentioned, Boy may run both of the most sport races. So let's just hope Steckley's poor luck on the road courses doesn't come along with the car. Yeah, I get it, bad joke. An old driver from Peterborough, Ontario, Brian Cathcart ran full-time during some of Cathcart's years and ran a couple of Pinty Series races in 2007, 2008, and 2016. He took a break after the latter year to focus on his family and business, but he never shined away from the track as he would be seen multiple times as a supporter of multiple teams. He's happy to be back, and this year, it's going to be full-time for Bray Autosports. Although, that's not what the team name here is in comparison to a news article from February. But anyways, now we're at a point where the silly season took an extremely unexpected twist, and funny enough, it was actually pretty recent to the timing of editing all of this. Back on April 26th, Cam K had originally made an earlier list of what the series' 2022 roster was looking like so far. In the unannounced category was none other than Andrew Ranger, which begs the question, is Rick Rare Racing not returning? Yup, that's exactly correct. Turns out that due to sponsorship problems, and the fact that you can't just copy and paste an American sponsor onto a car in Canada when running full time without an officially signed contract, <laughs> the team will not return. This begs another question, where does Ranger go? Well... Did anyone else see this coming? Heh, <laughs> I didn't either. On May 5th, it was revealed with a press conference that Ranger will be teaming up with Mark Antoine Cameron, driving for the brand new Paillet racing team, owned by the GM Paillet car dealer in Berthaville, Quebec. The organization has already been with another Pinty Series team in the past, ironically being 22 Racing, on Mark Antoine Cameron's old number 22 car. So, what are the details on the drivers? Ranger is arguably the series' current, most prestigious driver, as he's raced in the series since its humble beginnings when the NASCAR partnership was born. Along with experience in Champ Car and every top national series in NASCAR, Ranger is just about everything to his name on his Pinty Series resume. Three championships in 07, 09, and 2019, 30 wins and 143 starts, and 117 top 10s. A lot of people can remember his visually stunning number 27 tie car from the first years of the series, and, ironically enough, that will be his number with Paillet Racing. It all comes full circle, eh? Oh, and guess who's going to be Ranger's crew chief? Oh, it's just some guy named Caden Lapsevich. Cam Rand, on the other hand, is a veteran who, in recent years, has run for 22 Racing. Driving the iconic number 22 car that team owner Scott Steckley had accomplished many things in prior to Cam Rand. Last year, Cameron accomplished the feat of scoring the number 22 car its first win on a road course ever, which yes, that's true. Steckley never won a single road course race in that car. Despite that, he had a drop-off year with only two top fives, four top tens, five laps led, and an average finish of 12.9, and an 11th place points finish. He's had a partnership with GM Paye since 2016, so it's likely no wonder how the team got together. If he's the one that managed to get Ranger to join in on the entire deal, then god almighty. What a move. In the number two car is TJ Arenomato, another very old driver and a CEO of a real estate business. From Toronto, Ontario, Arenomato is the title being named the oldest rookie of the year ever from the 2019 season, where he ran full time but didn't score a single top 10 finish. He returned to the series in 2021 with a full time campaign and he scored his first top 10 finish in the season finale at Delaware. Arenomato returns for another full time campaign with RGC Sports. Perhaps this time around, he will start scoring some solid finishes. The other driver at RGC Sports is veteran Mark Dilley, 
from Barrie, Ontario. With over 35 years of experience in stock car racing and over 200 victories, Dilly was a multi-time winner in Cast Car's days and remained a championship contender in the early years of the Pinty series. He's been more of a mid-pack driver in recent years, but with multiple championships across Ontario and local short tracks, Dilly's pedigree keeps him as a guy to respect and look out for. After RGC Sports comes another historically successful team, and that's Team 3 Red slash EHR. In the iconic number 3 car is Brett Taylor from Calgary, Alberta. Taylor made a couple of starts in the Pinty series between 2016 and 2017, driving for Scott Steckley's team. He began running full-time in 2018 for Joey McCollum's team, finishing 10th in the standings with Rookie of the Year honors. In 2019, he scored his first career victory in the season finale at Jucasa. After coming close to victory a few times, and veteran Jason Hathaway scoring his first championship in the short 2020 season, Hathaway handed the wheels of the iconic number 3 car to Taylor for 2021. He wouldn't be able to perform as exactly on pace as Hathaway had, but he did manage an 8th place points finish with 2 top 5s and 6 top 10s. Taylor returns to the same car for another full-time run this year, with a new sponsor, North County Property Maintenance Incorporated. In the number 8 car, it's another set of multiple drivers. First is Ray Jr. Courtemalsh, a driver and real estate business owner born in 1973 in Montreal, Quebec. Courtemalsh was more of a part-time driver for multiple teams in the series during the early to mid-2010s, scoring a single top 10 finish in 2014, and that year was also when he ran a truck series race at Most Sport, finishing 20th. He will return to the series for the first time in years, driving the number 8 car on all the road courses. On the ovals will be none other than Raphael Lassard, a former Truck Series race winner and arguably the biggest current racing prospect in all of Canada. At just age 20, he's got experience in a bunch of different organizations. The Cars Super Late Model Tour, the Snowball Derby, ARCA, and one of the top NASCAR series, including a win at Talladega Super Speedway. The one main issue that's been holding Lassard back is funding, which is why he lost his ride at GMS Racing only 7 races into last year's Truck Series season, and also why his plans to run select Xfinity Series races this season fell into the drain completely. As was discussed before, Lassard scored back-to-back -back victories at Sunset in the Pinty Series as a replacement driver. Now, he'll be running on all the ovals, giving him a big opportunity to show his true potential once again. Returning to the number 92 car for a third straight year is Dexter Stacy who ran a couple of full-time seasons back between 2009 and 2011, scoring a best points finish at 10th, twice, despite only one total top 10. After a few years of part-time runs, he left the series for a while and made some small returns in 2019. In a full-time campaign in 2020, he scored three top 10s and a 9th place points finish. He returned in 2021 for more full-time racing, scoring seven top 10s, and again, another 9th place points finish. Stacy will look for better results in his first full-time campaign since 2020, or 2011 when not counting the pandemic. A little fun fact about Stacy: his father Wallace has been confirmed to be running at the Sunset Season Opener in the number 66 car. Father and son racing, how cool is that? In the number 80 car is expected to be a mixture of drivers, with one being veteran Donald Teach, who raced a couple of times in cast cars days, won at my closest track of Riverside in 2018, and was a championship contender for a few years before being injured prior to 2021, which refers back to the Raphael Lassard situation. He's expected to run on all the ovals this season, with a second, unknown driver running the Oshwickin Dirt Race. In the number 9 car for White Motorsports, a team and car building business based out of St. Thomas, Ontario, is Brandon Watson from Stainer, Ontario. A driver who has run in late models since at least 2007, Watson has shown lots of potential in every race he's competed in, including good runs in the Canadian Short Track Nationals twice, and running in the Winchester 400 in 2019, finishing 5th. He took his shot at the Pinty Series last year in 4 races for White Motorsports, and he did surprisingly well. 2 top 5s and 3 top 10s in 4 starts, including a near win in the 2nd of the 3 Delaware races, and 30 laps led. He'll be running full-time this year, so expect him to compete up front most of the time. From this point onward, we get to a series of drivers that are in a category of unknown numbers and or teams, starting with a return to the Klute family. Although not confirmed for a specific team just yet, seeing Gary Klute finally back on a full-time schedule for the first time since 2016 is exciting as hell to me. I absolutely love this guy, and his work ethic when racing is astounding. With some experience in the Cup and Truck series, Klute's history consists of mostly part-time campaigns. However, he did run full-time in 2015 and 2016, 
scoring one win, one top five, 15 top tens, two poles, an overall average finish of 9.85, and a best points finish of sixth. He came super damn close to a win at most four last year, as mentioned before. Wherever he goes, watch out for him this season. The next name may sound familiar based on the previous video, and yes, it's the son of Canadian racing legend Ron Fellows. Potentially on a full-time schedule, Sam Fellows made 8 starts in 2021 for Mike Kerb, scoring a best finish of 11th in the second of three Delaware races. With him having the Fellows name, he could most certainly be a popular driver both in the garage and on the track. Could he be a potential winner? It's a little early to consider, but he should definitely be a decent driver around the middle of the pack for the time being. However, on the road courses in particular, do keep an eye out for him. Speaking of popular names, when I bring up these next two names, I highly anticipate people to have their jaws drop in some form. Racing legend Ken Schrader and current Truck Series veteran Stuart Friesen are both expected to do the one race at Oshwicken. With this information, you can only imagine that the race is going to be extremely popular with the fans, particularly the ones at the track. Just imagine the field for that race. Kennington, Lapsovich, Tagliani, Dumoulin, Ranger, Lacroix, Schrader, Friesen, etc. That's insanely fun to think about. With Newfoundland now getting onto the schedule for the first time ever, there are two local drivers. Phil Fowler is a driver, team owner, and auto body shop owner in St. John's who has raced for years across the province. And according to resources, he's a very popular driver over there. The crowd should definitely be cheering him on. He's also expected to run the season finale at Delaware, so it's nice to see him go at it outside the province as well. Sarah Thorne is apparently a driver in the Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series and also drives Bandoleros, and she's had a lot of success in them across the province. And she even scored a win at Eastbound Park in the Weekly Series. Again, another driver that the Newfoundland crowd will likely cheer on. Now, I wanted to look back at Cam K's old list from late April to review some of the names that are either in the not expected or unknown slash unannounced category. One driver that isn't on the recent list, but is in that category on the old list, plus has said something online that I would like to point out is Kyle Marcelli, who is another rookie from last year who made three starts, scoring one top five and one top ten. With experience from sports cars, Marcelli is mentioned in that category to not be expected to return. However, a reply on Twitter has confirmed his intent on attempting the fall race at most sport and the Oshwigan race. Although sponsorships are 50-50 at the moment, along with a confirmed team. Seeing Peter Shepard and not expected is a little disappointing, as he actually did pretty well in his part-time since in 2021. He almost won one of them, and he's a pretty solid driver. Cole Powell is a driver who took over for Jason Hathaway during the 2018 season, and he had a really good campaign, scoring one win, eight top fives, ten top tens, one pole, 125 laps led, and an average finish of 5.5 with a fourth place points finish. Ever since, he's ran part time, and in three starts in 2021, he scored one top five. If any team wants someone new, whether it's for the whole season or just for a couple of races, Powell is your guy to bring the car home in one piece. Shea Gemmel was a rookie last year, driving for Jamie Hackinson in the number eight car scoring one top five and three top tens in five starts, with his most notable moment likely being the big crash in the second Delaware race, which eventually led to the pit road brawl. I can only imagine he's probably going through some sort of problem or other plans if he still hasn't gotten a ride yet. J.R. Fitzpatrick is a name that many Pinty Series fans will know of, or I guess Canadian Tire Series fans if you want to put it that way, and even some fans of the higher national series. Fitzpatrick is a cast car champion, he ran the Pinty Series from 2007 till 2014 with every season except one being full time, and he finished runner up in the points three times, including one year where he finished three points behind LP Dumoulin for the title. He returned in 2020 with four starts, scoring two top fives and three top tens, and then made a single start at Delaware last year with a finish of ninth for White Motorsports. Any team looking for a second spot? Give this man a full time gig. I would absolutely love to see him go for the title again. J.F. Dumoulin is the older brother of LP, with loads of experience in sports cars, including multiple Rolex 24 victories, and many years in the Pinty series, some full-time, some part-time, with his best points finish being 8th in 2015 and 2017. To conclude after going through all the drivers, 
If there could be a couple more names like, let's say, Shepard and Gemmel that could be announced later on in the season, maybe, because at this point, I don't think they're going to be running full time, to be honest. We may be set for one of the greatest seasons in the series' history. It's such a stacked field, even with those extra names. And when adding in Schrader and Freeze into the mix for the first ever Dirt Race, the popularity should most certainly soar throughout the season. Now, it's time to look at the 13 race schedule, as there are many movements across the board. Be wary of some tracks having names while some others don't. Again, this video will likely be somewhat outdated, like I've said way too many times already. The season will begin at Sunset Speedway in Innisfil, Ontario, with the NTN Ultimate Bearing Experience 250, which has been the site of the Pinty Series season opener since 2020, with doubleheaders happening in both of the previous two years. This season, however, it will be one race on Saturday, May 14th. Sunset is a one-third of a mile asphalt short track that hosts many very popular series in Ontario, which includes sportsman cars, legend cars, midget cars, late models, and much, much more. The Pinty Series first joined the track in 2015, with Alex Tagliani scoring the win, along with winning at the track again in 2016. The track wouldn't return to the series until 2020, with LP Dumoulin and Jason Hathaway scoring doubleheader victories, and of course, Raphael Lasarga has doubleheader victories in 2021. Next up is the eBay Motors 200 at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park on Sunday, May 22nd. Probably the most popular and well-known track in the series, although that could be argued. Most Sport is a 2.5 mile long road course with 10 turns, and it puts on a show almost every single time. The track hosted a mid-season doubleheader in 2021, with LP Dumoulin and Mark Antoine Cameron scoring victories. Autodrome Chaudier makes a return after having both of its races cancelled in 2021 due to poor weather. The last official race in 2019, ironically enough, saw Raphael Lassard dominate the race and clutch the victory as Mother Nature swooped in and showered down on the track. Race 4 will take history as the track's first ever race in Newfoundland and Labrador as the series heads to eastbound International Speedway for the Pro Line 225. This will be the first race in Atlanta, Canada since the yearly Riverside race in Nova Scotia which unfortunately lost its date after 2019 due to financial problems. Eastbound is mainly a track used for local racing and the Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series. With the Pinty Series now going to the 3 8 of a mile short track, the racing community should be super excited, and the race should hopefully bring in good revenue for the province's tourism industry. Race 5 is a return to a road course, as the series heads to Exhibition Place in Toronto, Ontario on the same weekend that IndyCar goes. The previous race on the street circuit was in 2019, as Alex Tagliani fought a close battle with Andrew Ranger en route to victory. The circuit has always put on a show with the Pinty Series, and having a race alongside IndyCar should help with the series' publicity. The series returns to the Western Provinces for the first time since 2019 with Race 6 at Edmonton International Raceway, aka the Bayer 300. Andrew Ranger won the last race in 2019 in absolutely dominant fashion. Only a couple days later, it's a Wednesday? Doubleheader in Saskatoon as the series hits the Sutherland Automotive Speedway, formerly Wyant Group Raceway, for races 7 and 8. In 2019, LP Dumoulin and Andrew Ranger captured the doubleheader victories at the one third of a mile short track. It's back on a road course for race 9, as the series returns to GP3R, aka Trois-Rivières, for the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. Go figure. This is another extremely popular road course, as the overall racing product and finishes are always something to applaud. Alex Tagliani clutched off a late restart in the 2021 race. This track is also known to some for a wild crash in 2014, as Xavier Kupal went tumbling over and over down a straightaway. Yep, a flip on a road course. I mean, Scott Steckley did it too at, oh yeah, let's let's use my pronunciations from previous videos, Cir Circuit Gills Volenu- If I had to choose a race with the most anticipation of them all, I'd have to give it to race 10 which will be the Pinty Series' first ever run on a dirt track, being the Pinty's 100 at Oshwicken Speedway in Oshwicken, Ontario. On a Tuesday night? Jeez, this schedule has been weird in some places. With Stuart Friesen and Ken Schrader expected to run this race, it should be an ultimate classic that certifies itself in the history books of Canadian motorsports. A 3 8 of a mile short dirt track with absolutely no barriers on the straightaways, although it wouldn't surprise me if that actually was changed for this race. The craziness should be at an all-time high. Circuit Icar in Mirabelle, Quebec is next up on the schedule as a sort of wrap-up for the summer. 
A 2.1 mile long circuit on a set of former airport runways, this track usually puts on some pretty good racing. It literally looks like a track meant for advanced go-karts, so having these giant cars go around makes things look pretty fun and interesting. In 2021, Kevin Lacroix dominated the race, and he's won the race three times. It wouldn't be surprising to see him return and put on another clinic. For the second to last race, the series returns for another run at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in early September. As mentioned before, Mark Antoine Cameron is the defending winner of the second race. The season finale returns to Delaware Speedway, the one track that many long-tenured fans will know of as the pioneer track of the series' history, going back to the first years of Cast Car and founder Tony Novotny. <coughs> Older video. As the replacement for the cancelled Autodrome Shawty Air races in 2021, its three-race campaign to end the season was outstanding, and the amount of chaos that went on over the course of two days was just breathtaking. It's a track that absolutely deserves to host the finale, and the pedigree of its history backs it up so well. Now that we've covered the schedule, do I have any predictions? Well, I'll think of some quick ones right now. Prediction number one, Trayton Lapsovich will win at least four races and finish top three in the standings. There's no way in hell this kid doesn't win a race this year. It's like Trayton is the second coming of his older brother, who went through a similar case when he raced in the series. Looked pretty solid for the most part, but struggled a bit in terms of finishes, with the only exception altogether being that he ran part-time. Then, he went on to score that unbelievable championship in 2016. <coughs> older video. Could we see the same thing with Trayton? Will 2022 be his blowout season? It's going to be a big challenge for the teenager, but his time to pounce is now. Prediction number two. In the case of Gary Clute running the full campaign, I predict he will win at least one race and finish at least eighth in the standings. Clute just won a race before, it came at the season opener in most sport in 2015. He almost won it again in 2021, but lost to mild mechanical problems. I believe Clute will be a daily contender. Prediction number three. There will be at least two photo finishes throughout the year. Bonus, one of them will be at the Oshwicken race. It would not surprise me at all if someone just absolutely sent it in the final corner and managed to do a beaten and bang and run to the line in the final turn. Just imagine if it was Friesen and Schrader in that situation. That would be funny, but also incredible. Prediction number four, someone is going to flip in a race. Bonus, it's at either Sunset or Delaware. Call me crazy, but the series has seen many airborne incidents at its time. Funny enough, most of them have occurred on road courses, but this time around, I feel like choosing chaos. And to be kind of fair, it is the most realistic, I guess. And finally, prediction number five. Your 2022 champion will be none other than the man himself, Kevin Lacroix. Yup, I said it. Kevin Lacroix is going to finally score his first series championship. His Mark Martin slash Denny Hamlin style run of falling short every time will end this season. I will make a hot take that if he hadn't been so inconsistent in 2021, he likely would have won the championship. Just look at his results. One race, he finishes top 5. Another race, an issue hits him. Next one, scores a top 5 or perhaps scores a victory. Then it's back to the rear of the field, again. It's about damn time that he lifts the crown above his head. But I will admit, with the amount of parity and tightness on this year's entry list, it could be Lacroix's biggest challenge yet. To be kind of honest though, you could say that for anyone. So there it is. A full preview of the upcoming 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series season. A field of as many veterans and young guns as you could count. A schedule that returns to the good old days before the pandemic, including a race on dirt and some predictions that express my absolute clownery of a mind. With how big the other Pinty Series video has gotten, it appears the attention is really getting out there. And this follow-up video should hopefully help those that are beginning to become more invested in what should be a thriller of a series this year. If you care enough to tune into the races this year, especially if you're from outside of Canada, Flow Racing has you covered. You will need a subscription in order to view events, which may sway you off a bit, but trust me, a subscription to the Flow Racing service will be absolutely worth it. You won't just have access to live coverage of Pinty Series races, nope, you'll also get plenty of other series and organizations, whether it's weekly grassroots racing on the good old asphalt short tracks, or some incredible dirt racing. 
To clarify, I'm not being sponsored here, nor do I have a promo code for any of you, unfortunately. Although, Flow Racing, if you're watching this, I'm willing to talk. For the Canadians, Flow Racing is an option. However, there is also TSN Direct, the sports network, go figure, where you can either create a Bell Media account with your email, or you can use your TV provider to get yourself in, if you're connected to one, like Rogers or Bell for example. TSN will broadcast tape delays about a week or so after every race, which has historically been the case. For the French over in Quebec, there's RDS. Oh, and I almost forgot, there's also RacingReference.net for your series statistics. You'll get full standings, race results, which go very in-depth, the schedule, and much, much more. In whatever way you want to enjoy and remain caught up on race coverage, all of them are your way of being a loyal supporter of the NASCAR Pinty series. So anyways, that's going to do it for this one. Got any thoughts? Leave them in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and give this a thumbs up. My name's Riegzer, or Riegs for short, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the upcoming 2022 NASCAR Pinty series season. Have a good one.